my darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing The Con Artist by Fred Van Lenty. It has illustrations by Tom Fowler in this, but this is a novel. Um, so it is a murder mystery set at San Diego Comic-Con. Tons of geek nerd comic book references in here. Comic-Con definitely takes dead center in this book. In fact, it entirely takes place over the four days that Comic-Con um, happens in. And this one does have plenty of humor in it, and it's also a bit of a satire of the comic book industry and kind of exploring how it functions and works and how cons work and the fandom versus the comic creators versus like the industry that wants to make money off of it. All of that gets rolled into here. And mostly it's a really fun ride, but also it's a mystery and it has dark moments and some things that are a little bit creepy and kind of sad, so all the emotions kind of blended in there. But um, I enjoyed this book. <laughs> So the main character in this is Mike Mason. He is a comic book artist and writer. He specifically worked on Mr. Mystery, which is this big superhero comic, like one of the big names in this book. Um, and Mike got to work under the creator of that comic series, Ben Kay, who actually was Mike's mentor when he first started in the business. And that's how Mike got his run on the comics. He also has another claim to fame in that he created this other comic series called Gut Check which is a post-apocalyptic pro-wrestling action drama romance. How does that not sound awesome? And Gut Check had recently been turned into, I think it was a movie, but it might have been a television show. Anyway, it's gone to screen, and so there's tons of buzz about it, and he's gained popularity through that also. So our main character is not a total unknown in the comic book industry. He's, he's got some, some stuff going on for him. However, his personal life is kind of a mess. His wife uh, was cheating on him, and they ended up splitting, and now Mike has been roaming from con to con and is basically homeless um, for the last, like, three years. And there's absolutely no hiding his rivalry with Danny Lieber, who used to be his boss and is the guy his wife cheated on him for. Yeah. In fact, they were very publicly seen fighting, like an actual fist fight, uh, the night that Danny gets murdered. So Mike is the first first prime suspect in that murder, and so Mike spends all of Comic-Con trying to prove his innocence. Uh, so he doesn't go to jail. Like, the cops suspect him, but don't quite have enough evidence to actually take him in yet. And Mike's like, you know, the best way to not get uh, charged with murder is to find the actual killer. So that's what he's doing while still trying to do all of Comic-Con stuff. So Comic-Con definitely plays a huge part of this book. We get to see all the booze and kind of talk about the panels and all the cosplay that's happening. And we definitely get to see the artist alley where Mike has his booth set up and meet some of the other artists and collectors that he works with. Um, there's also stuff like um, the movie and TV promotions and how some of them can get so big, like having renting out the entire, like I think it's a football stadium and turning it into a zombie obstacle course which is a tie-in to the zombie prison show, or flash maps of cosplay trying to break world records, or there's tons and tons of parties. Some of them are promoted by like the big movie studios trying to push their comic book movies that are coming out, and some of them are like a bunch of artists like gathering at a bar and getting drunk together. And there's also an award show in here called, it's called the Kirby's in here, but it's based off the Eisner Awards. Um, that also plays a big part in this. And there's plenty of social commentary from Mike about what he thinks of the comic book industry and how comic book artists are treated, which is not always great. Like, they're generally taken for granted of and treated as disposable. Um, we just want art, for, we just want, like, the product from you, and then they don't really take care of the artists. One of my favorite parts was actually getting to see all the back behind the stage stuff of, like, the big San Diego Comic Con and how big the crowds get and exactly, like, trying to picture the scale of it, especially since like a four-day con and all the different stuff that happens. Because I mean, I've never gone to San Diego Comic-Con and actually I'm kind of not a fan of crowds, so I'm not sure I ever want to go to San Diego Comic-Con. But also having gone to smaller cons like Cleveland, like I know what Comic-Con feels like and this definitely captures that. And I also just love all the references to different comics in here. So like there are references in here to like Marvel and DC stuff and some of the other comic books. Um, and there are plenty that are just made up as, like, commentary, like the gut check one being all about, like, post-apocalyptic uh, 
tragedy happening or the zombie prison show. There was a lot of fun intrigue trying to guess what happened. I didn't really know who was who was the killer. Honestly, I don't think I ever really got it. And of course, this is a murder mystery, so a lot of the fun revolves around trying to guess like the next clue before Mike gets to it and solve the big murder before him. Um, there are illustrations in here, like I said, and ta-da, the art, which is, these are all like supposed pages taken out of Mike's sketchbook, of, like he's sitting there drawing stuff. There's supposed to be clues in here in each of these drawings, but I actually never found any of them, at least nothing that wasn't also explicitly mentioned in the text. So it's fun to look at these, but I would kind of take that there's supposed to be clues in here with like a pinch of salt. And nobody else's review that I read or viewed has like said that they caught any of the clues in the art either. So, eh, but it was kind of fun to actually see it like drawn out, like that that becomes part of the story. And also that just Mike, Mike's always drawing and he's always thinking and taking stuff in. And then the last thing I really wanted to talk about in this book is that Mike kind of doesn't know, always know what he's talking about. Sometimes he'll start talking about other parts of the industry and we'll see it from Mike's take on some other character's view. So one of the other artists that he works with is a woman and she's pregnant and so there's social commentary about how women creators are treated and about how pregnant women are treated but from the viewpoint of somebody who doesn't really know it firsthand. There is one character in here who like talks about her own experience of being she's missing an arm and how she relates to this other character that is also missing an arm and how that meant so much to her but most of the time we get stuff like minorities and comics and they're coming from mike who's not a minority he's not a woman um he's never been pregnant and it feels weird he even makes a quote about how people um he even flat out says that people tend to associate with traits that they already have so muslims are more likely to relate to ms marvel Blacks relate to Storm, people in wheelchairs relate to Oracle, um, and everything else is just created for white guys. And that seems so wrong because as a woman, I can totally relate to male characters or characters of different ethnicities or faiths or abilities. Like, just because we don't share outward or superficial characteristics doesn't mean that I don't associate with something else in them. Um, brave or smart or clever or whatever. So that part kind of grated on me a little. But for the most part, I really enjoyed The Con Artist. It was a really quick read. I read it only a couple of days and I totally gave it four stars. So I highly recommend this if you love murder mysteries or you love comics or comic con or just geek culture in general and you're looking for a funny, interesting mystery to read. Ta-da! My review for The Con Artist by Fred Van Lemte. Let me know in the comments below if you have read this or if you've read other books that also capture that feeling of geek, geek fandom and being part of like this group and nerd culture. Um, yeah, my thoughts are gone. I can't, I can't, I can't talk today. Yeah, so peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye!